Alright guys, welcome back to Dishonored! This is Dishonored 2, and we're going to be doing the High Chaos Emily playthrough. I'm Ghost, and we're going to be doing this in long form Let's Play format, like all the videos on the channel. So we're going to have episodes ranging from, you know, 30, 45 minutes to an hour every day. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Get a good chunk of Dishonored every day. And so, yeah, like I said, high chaos. The kills in this game from the trailers look amazing, so I don't want to do a peaceful run. So let's get started with Emily's story. New game. Uh, medium, uh, hard. For veterans of Dishonored or players who enjoy a challenge, enemies are perceptive, tenacious, and more dangerous in combat. Well, if we're going to be killing them, we might as well give them a sporting chance now. Uh, sure, why don't we go through the tutorial. Emily Calderon, ruler of the Empire and Emp of the Isles, you have numerous enemies. Your father is Lord Corvoratano, so absolute verification, Emily is my daughter, or Corvo's daughter from the last game. Famous, infamous royal protector and spy master. In the years since you took the throne, Corvo spent many hours training you in the arts of stealth and combat. I remember training with my father in the years after the Rat Plague. Someday, he said, our enemies will come for you. Oh. Mobility training. Meet up with your father. All right. Don't have any weapons. We got a weapon wheel. Uh, what is our inventory? No, not have an inventory yet. All right. Just... The sounds and smells of Dunwall never change much. This is my city. All right, sprinting. What training regimen does Father have in store for me today? All right, Majesty. Let's see what you can do. Oh, I love it. They're fully voice acted in this game. Um. Oh. Alright. See his crouch. Space jump. Alright, just like the old game. Ooh, I gotta slide now. Right. Sweet! Good. <laughs> now what? You have to sprint, vault the obstacle, then slide under. Woo! Oh, I love this. This new movement system is What's amazing. Next? Or improved movement system. Okay. Nice. They totally revamped swimming. That's nice. Climbing. Oh, cool. It has like a... You're like just like holding on and like sliding down. That's awesome. If only I could spend every day running and jumping. Nice. Now let's see how quickly. Ghost is actually good at parkour in a game. Come to me. You've learned well. Nice. Let's see how quiet you are, young lady. Sneaking time. Great. The question is, has Emily learned from Corvo, the world's worst assassin, and have they has Emily gotten better? <laughs> All right, stealth mode. Enemies are slower to detect you in stealth mode, especially when you are farther away from them, above them, or at the edge of their peripheral vision in shadows. Though this this matters more at a distance. Stealth mode enables you to take cover under desks or tables, lure enemies away, distract them by throwing an object such as a bottle or setting on the alarm on a clock. Fancy. Dun, 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 dun. Father's always on about the value of quiet feet. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Oh shit, there's a peek over now? That's... Oop, don't see me. Yeah, awareness. Yeah, I'm aware that the, he's aware of me. I like that system better than the three bars. That if you're quick enough with the chokehold... That's one more person who gets to wake up and go home. And non-lethal! Oh. 
<laughs> he has learned learn. well. Don't let me hear you or see you. Use cover to stay out of sight. The key. We're even ready. <laughs> In the words of Corvo Atano, hidden like a secret, quiet as the sunset. Ah, ah, ah. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh, we got our crossbow back. Ah, this Remember, feels good. A pistol will wake up everyone in the building. Your crossbow is quiet. Ah. Oh, I don't have my quick reload upgrade. Oh shit, that's fancy. Perfect shot. Oh, that is cool. Also, those of you wondering, I have auto aim turned completely off because I want to have as uh, realistic experiment. I keep seeing the like lighter color rats, and I want to eat them as a snack. <laughs> but I don't have that power as Emily yet. Time for some more weapons and combat training. Let's beat each other up, shall we? Sounds like a fun father-daughter outing. Yes. You hit hard. That's my daughter. When someone swings a sword at you, block. All right, what's block? Control. Block with your blade. Good. Well oh. done. Ow. There's probably like a timing thing where if I block at the right time, they stun. You've got a natural instinct for fighting. It's a little odd key for blocking, though. If you time your block right, you'll throw an enemy off balance. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Ow. Come on. You're quick. Come on. Smart move. Okay, there we go. You can choke an enemy. It's a little out fiddly, but I'll get combat. better at it. Really? Enemies off balance, grab them. Oh! -ho! Nice. That's fancy. So you can even turn sword fighting into a passive run. That's nice. Like it gives you options. Enemies off balance, full time block, you form fatality by pressing. Come on. They're off balance. Nice. I'm gonna be using that a bit. All right, I'm gonna be good at blocking. Feel better knowing you can take care of yourself. Well, the thanks, does Dad. Come. <laughs> We're ready to fight. Low light makes you hard to see only at a distance. Okay, so shadows aren't useful for close range. Today marks the anniversary of the death of es Empress Jessamine Caldwin, assassinated 15 years ago. Visitors from across the Empire of the Isles have journeyed to Dunwall Tower for the occasion. Why do we celebrate the anniversary of an assassination? 15 years ago, in the middle of a plague that nearly destroyed Dunwall, a paid killer assaulted the palace where I was born and stabbed my mother in the heart. In the aftermath, the men who sent the assassin tried to use me as a pawn in a game of power. They would have succeeded, but my father, Corvo Atano, hunted them down and cut their conspiracy to pieces. All these years later, am I the ruler my mother wanted me to be? Now, we face a new crisis. A monster the papers are calling the Crown Killer has been picking off my enemies and dressing it up like my father and I are responsible. Ooh. I don't know whether to get on a ship and sail to the opposite side of the world, or to have everyone around me executed. Wonder if Dowd came back or whatnot? We have missed a little bit of story because we didn't play the DLCs of the first game yet, so hopefully that doesn't hurt us too much lore-wise. But I assume the game would explain everything. Watch your step, Majesty. 
I'm not looking forward to all the ceremony today. Your signet ring. There. You're ready. Thank you, Alexei. Open the doors. Ooh, fancy. All hail Her Imperial Majesty, Emily Caldwin. Loyal subjects, we're going through a difficult time, but today we honor my mother, the late Jessamine Caldwin. May her memory survive through the ages. Emily. You look tired, Father. Every year, I think the anniversary of Jessamine's death will be easier, but it never is. I wish Mother was still the Empress. I don't think I'm very good at this. You're still learning. Don't worry about the rabble-rousers, and we'll catch the Crown Killer, eventually. People are saying it's you, that these assassinations are a misguided effort to protect me. No, someone's trying to make us look guilty by targeting your enemies. Well, they're eliminating my enemies for them, so... This? Sometimes you do. You think I don't know about your nights out on the rooftops? <laughs> Courage. The ceremony will be over soon. Royal protector and father. I should have passed a law against that combination of titles years ago. Oh, that's a cool throne. Your Majesty, before we begin the day's observances, we have an unexpected visitor. The Duke of Circonos. Ramsay says the Duke is bringing special gifts. That's intriguing. Duke of Well, robots Michael look pretty Sultans? cool. Amazing. What is this, Ramsey? I didn't authorize those things. Your Imperial Majesty and Royal Protector Corvo Atano, a native of our homeland. Sarconis offers condolences on this sorrowful day and gifts to remind you of our nation. The rising star on the southern horizon. We thank you, Your Grace. Save your thanks. For now, I give you the greatest gift of all. Family. I present the lost sister of Jessamine Caldwin. Your rightful empress. Delilah Caldwin. Impossible. My mother had a sister? My dearest niece. Hello. It's not true. My father was Emperor Yuhorn Jacob Caldwin, and Jessamine was my younger sister. At the time of her death, I wasn't ready to make myself known to you, and I was forced to leave Dunwall. But now I'm home. If you really are my mother's sister, you're welcome to stay as long as you like. Little Sparrow, blackened by bad memories, I'm here to relieve you of your crown. My father's promise, whispered in secret so many years ago, is now fulfilled. Watch your tongue. Emily Caldwin is the daughter of Empress Jessamine Caldwin. Royal Protector. How naive to think you could get away with these murders. Living in my palace has protected you, but that's over. Hear me, all of you. Your rightful Empress has returned. All hail the Empress Delilah. First of her name. Arrest Emily Caldwin and her father for the Crown Killer murder. What? Yeah, we're gonna have to stop this. Oh shit. Okay, she just pulled the sword out of her heart. Just rip out Corvo's powers? Is that like a mana drain or something? All right. Yep, we're definitely playing as Emily. Uh, how do I select that? Enter. Yes. You in cold marble. No. Oh, that's not cool. I thought this would be a buddy game. Sweet girl, over time you will come to love me. Perhaps someday you'll see me as the mother you lost. 
But until then, you'll be kept out of trouble. I'll lock Lady Emily in her chambers, and I'll bring her to cold <gasps> prison until her trial. Oh, come on! What the fight! My father lost it all when I was a boy, so now I wear this uniform, and I send 20-year-olds out to patrol the Rose Gardens instead of drinking with the men from the shooting club. Captain Ramsey, I heard shouting. Lady Emily, what happened? No! It'll be all, Captain Mayhew. We didn't even know your name until after you were dead. No! So that's the Royal Protector's fancy weapon. What a kind of sword folds in half. One I'm gonna stab you with? Yeah, we're definitely playing high chaos on this one. <laughs> you people fucking deserve it. There's a legend in the Tower Guard about the Empress's last resort, a safe room inside your chambers holding enough gold to buy a good-sized island. They say that this ring is one of the only two keys to exist. Yeah, I'm gonna be taking that ring back, if you don't mind. What, what happened? Alexei. The throne room. Father. All right. Nothing I can do alone. I need to get out of here. So the one thing I do know about Delilah is she is one of the Brigmore witches from the Brigmore witches DLC. So it looks like I'm definitely gonna have to be playing that DLC. Ramsey knows what he's doing. The man's moving up in the world. He's old blood. One of the good families. These bastards are working with Ramsey and the Duke of Sirkonos. Ramsey's are gonna be back in fashion in Dunwall. You'd be smart to remember that. All right, so we got like an overhang into a lower area. God, this game looks beautiful. Letter from the Tivian Trade Commission. Oh, jeez. Most esteemed empress, as you know, free from Circados, bound for Tivia, is now routinely set upon by pirates. Or spo Ooh, she, I, I really wanted to fight pirates in the first game. Or spoiled with blood flies. In addition to the loss of Tivian lives, by be they crew, dock workers, or shopkeepers, there is the material cost of the cargo itself, which can barely be calculated. If things continue unchecked, we will be forced to cease trading with Circonos and perhaps even embargo ships from the southernmost island altogether. But this need not come to pass. Trade Commission is a reasonable body and has already considered the remedies to ameliorate the situation. You're seeking independent qualified inspectors at all ports, patrols to defend against pirates and smugglers, compensation for the previous and future losses. So basically, we want everything and want to offer nothing. Is this list of remedies that I wish to discuss with you in person at the earliest possible opportunity? So far, your staff has resisted my efforts to establish a definitive time for negotiation, prompt them to action, Majesty, who are eager to travel at Dunwall. Till we can sit down, discuss this in a civilized fashion, I send you your best. Uh, Damon Cherugan, Principal Tibian Trade Commission. Interesting. What else do I have? Do I have a letter opener? I will take that. You know, any kind of thing I can use as my sword. Ship launch protocol. Oh, this might be useful getting off the island. After the Royal Protector Shakedown cruise, we'll launch the ISS Jessamine Caldwin just before the anniversary of your mother's passing, pending your approval, of course. The platform will have a bottle of King Street brandy tied to a long tether that you will release to swing out against the hull. What you say during the ceremony is, of course, up to you, but here are some ideas intended to serve as food for thought. May a brisk wind hurry you to shores near, far, and fair. May you shelter your crew in the perils of the terrible ocean. May you always sail for Gristol, true of heart, and homeward bound. Yours faithfully, Advisor Wainwright. Alright, and Visor Helmswater. Empress, we face yet another murder, and I cannot remain silent on this matter. Strange is it not that all the victims have openly opposed you? If not strange, then oh so very convenient. Actually, yeah. I mean, sure, they're blaming me for it, but if I'm innocent, I'm still losing enemies, so... Not all the worst... Not the worst it could happen. Is there anything you wish to tell me, Majesty? How can I be advisor if you don't include me in these most sensitive of endeavors? I feel I must be the only person in Dunwall who doesn't know the truth about the Crown Killer. Don't leave me out in the cold. I remain your trusted servant advisor, Lenora Helmswater. Mmm. <gasps> grapes, Tibian pears, Circonian grapes, Morley apple. Mmm. Delicious. All the different aisles food represented here. Ah, set an alarm. 
Should I just spin it and pick a place to hide for a while? <laughs> I need time to think. Oh, cool. It actually has the uh, Pandisian continent as well. And the tiny little island nation right up over there. I was hoping that would like unlock a secret area or something, but it looks like I can use this alarm and like hide behind the desk or something and then like stab them when they come in or choke them out. Ooh. Can I hide behind the drapes? No. Globe spin. All right. All right, so we need the royal quarters key, so we have to lure them in. So this is the tutorial for that. All right. Well, time to start being sneaky. I used to hide frogs in this old grandfather clock to drive the housekeepers mad. <laughs> I thought life was complicated back then. Where did she go? No one will ever know. No. Oh, did I have to... Oh, I see how it goes. No, is that not enough to draw them in? I guess they wouldn't want to go in for... Oh, typewriter. That's kind of cool. Can I throw the typewriter at him? Break the door down with the typewriter? How am I getting out of this room? Oh, that's sneaky. I could jump up on things. Oh! The Hound Pits Pub. I can't believe it, but I actually miss those times. It's a good painting. What if we got uh, Sokolov to do it or Piero helped? I don't know. All right, I'm missing. Oh! Worst assassin ever. Lert Emily taking her father's title. There's an open window. I'm an idiot. <laughs> times have I looked at that skyline? It feels like everything just changed. Um. Let's see, do I go up? No. That's a bit of a drop. I don't really want to fall off of that. Um. Is there a climb? Maybe go out the other window? Ah. Alright. Locked from the inside. Aha! Here we are. Alright. Oh, everyone's dead! Delilah is some sort of witch. How is this possible? Okay, we can carry dead bodies. It's we look around. I know we have to go talk to our advisor who got stabbed. But... Lady Emily, you're all right. I was worried. Ah, it's coins. Always pays to loot. I need my signet ring. Ah, there's the secret cabinet. Where's the royal protector? There's a coup underway. My father is. He's imprisoned for lack of a better. Kind of turned to stone. <laughs> You've got to get out of the tower through your safe room. There was a captain earlier today down at the docks looking for the royal protector. Find her. Get out of Dunwall. Alexi. Thank I'm you, sorry. random military Goodbye. advisor person. I wish I actually knew you, but you were just introduced a minute ago. Aha, more loot. Loot senses are going well. There's the guy with the key. There's also a guard over there. Just wait for the alarm to go off. Who is fooling around? Gee, I wonder who it is. Yeah, totally nothing. No. Sure, he knows.
just had a talk with the boss. What a lick And there we go. You deserve that, bitch. That's what you get when you mess with the Empress. I'm throwing him out the window. <laughs> Goodbye. And his body was never found. All right, so that was just the grunt. This won't open without my ring. Yeah, so Ramsey I need to find asked. Ramsey. All right. First, actually we'll save that because I have to come back through this way anyway. I might need the health. What do we got here? Royal Protector. Robotano accused of sassing Emperor was sworn to protect. How unlikely he would not only overcome the shame, but then redeem himself so fully as to be named Royal Protector to yet another Empress. Those of us in the College of Histories are too fast to use pen against him. Or were too fast. Yet let us not blame historians, for the evidence against Corvo was nearly overwhelming. First, he was the only Royal Protector ever to have been born on the Isle other than Gristo. His foreignness, itself not a crime, but added to the suspicions, the most forgiving of which was that he lacked the capacity to fully understand his duties. Second, he was caught re quite red-handed with bloodied weapon kneeling over the body of Empress Jessamine. Of course, it turns out that even this damning evidence was part of a clever plot to destroy the Empress and remove Atano from interfering with the ongoing plans of the Lord Regent's conspirators. And while I admit that publishing what are now clearly incorrect conclusions regarding Corvo Atano, I will not, as some of my colleagues have done, resign my position at our venerable organization. But instead, I will reassert myself in the endeavor of weeding out fact from fiction to produce the most salient histories possible. That's nice. It's now open. What else we got? Anything interesting? Uh. Well, there's a guard right below me. Need all the gold I can to rebuild my empire. All right, no one's wandering up the stairs. Oh, Interesting. Like this reminds me of good times with friends, with Wyman. All gone now. Okay, we don't know who Wyman is. Or is that the, uh... She is that? Oh shit, forgot we could slide. Does that make someone aware? No. No, that's Mayhew. Aw. Here, let's get you a little bit someplace nicer. Sure, you're gonna ruin the sheets, but that'll only complain, or only cause problems for the new Empress. Alright. So we just gotta sneak down and get the key from that guy. Emily would be a good empress. And now she's gonna be a great assassin. She's also really good at looting her own palace. All that was in here. I miss my loot vision. I hope Emily gets some uh, outsider powers soon because uh, that loot vision was really nice. Oh, actually, before I forget. Ah, mirror check. Mirror check failed. 
I'm a vampire. That's the secret. There's a reason why the outsider hasn't given me powers. All right. Let's get ourselves down the stairs. Ugh. There's a guard right there. Aw. Poor servants. Well, miserable. God. One. And you're dead too. Jackass traitor guards. Exactly. So one of the awesome things about Dishonored 2 is that the both characters are fully voice acted and they will react based on how you uh, play the game. So if you go around uh, killing people, they will actually react to it. Which I'm looking forward to seeing their reactions. I'm gonna sit on this couch. Nothing hidden over here. Ah! Who keeps hiding money in all these cabinets? I mean, I guess, you know, if I was, you know, ruler of the Empire, I'd totally have people hide things for me to find. Oh, poor maid. Why are they killing the maids? Oops. Do not dr throw empty bottles. Unless we need to. Anything hidden over here. Ah! It's like hidey spot. Alright. Alright, I can see the use of this. Alright, what do we got over here? Alright, we got our assassination target. So he's got three guards. Alright. With the throne room blocked off, you should have the time we need. Just stay here and stall anyone who comes by. I'll be back when I have searched the royal chambers. Assuming I don't accidentally lock myself in this damn safe room. We'll cover for you if anyone from the Duke's party returns. Huh. This is exciting. Everything's changing. Yes. The natural order is reasserting itself. The Ramses once hosted the King and Queen of Morley. Did you know that? I spent my childhood playing with the Buntings and the Boils, the cream of society. Oh boy, somebody with delusions of power. Be back at the top, Captain. All right, there was a mission clue. Get the signet ring from him, open the safe room. Eliminate him, you can either kill him. Taking a lethal approach will create more chaos, resulting in a more cynical ending. Taking a non-lethal approach will create less chaos, resulting in a more optimistic engine ending. All right. Yep, he's a dangerous traitor and he will pay. He's also slow as shit walking to the, uh... oh, I thought he was gonna walk to the room. Oh, maybe he is. Then I will assassinate him. Bitch. Huh? Okay, apparently you can see me when I'm peeking. And you're dead. Snapped his neck! <laughs> that and I'll take that ring back. This won't leave my hand again. Of course, I didn't realize he was going to walk all the way through here, otherwise I wouldn't throw that guy on the couch. Now then, there's a couple more guards in the throne room that need to be taken care of. We're not letting any of these traitors survive. One guy behind the throne. I know there was a second guard, though. Perhaps we can lure this guy in here. Clock striking at a weird hour. No. Nope. A 
up that Scorpo statue. I thought that was one of them. All right, there's one guy by the th door. Where's the other guy? Okay, these guys are way smarter on hard mode. Like, normally when you're peeking like this, you would never get seen. Stop tying your damn shoe! I don't know where the other guy is. Okay, now I know where they both are. Broken glass. All right, let me take a look around. Let's have a look. Is he gonna come in here? What a fool. Shush! Wow, I took his arm off! Read the full tutorial. <laughs> Tackle your sword, press left to use your hand gadget or power. You can press and hold F to sheath your weapons. Got what was coming to you, jackass. See anything? <coughs> and suck it. All right. Oh, and wow, they just took everybody out. Heads missing. Wow. Oh. I don't know how, but I'll make this right. I promise. Well, I was hoping we'd have uh, this game to play with Dad as, like, backup or, you know, a mission giver or something, but looks like we're on our own. Barred from the outside. Okay, they blocked it off so no one else could see what happened in the throne room. Doesn't appear to be anything to loot. I was hoping I'd get something, like, a bit of lore, a bit of information. But, man, they killed everybody. So that's what we're gonna do in return. I also knocked over my chair. Animals. No respect. Tip it back over? Nope, we'll stand on it, though. Ah. Uh. Trouble has found us again, Mother. Can we take the painting? No. All right, so we're not looting the painting. Let's just take you. I don't expect another patrol, but we'll throw you on the pile nonetheless. Mmm, delicious. Like father, like daughter, she loves eating after a good kill. All right. Finish off our snack and then head into our security room. Oh, audience request. Captain Mayhew, you don't know me, but you got to tell the royal protector that I have an urgent need of his time. I'm carrying a message that has been delivered face to face. Has to be delivered face to face. Tell him I'm working with Anton Sokolov, an old friend. All the boats are being sent away from the docks, but I'll delay as long as I can. Tell the tell Lord Corvo to find me there. My ship is called the Dreadful Whale. Nice. Megan Foster. Interesting. To our secret room! Anton Sokolov made this lock. Nice. Let's make sure we shut that closed.
I spent so many nights in here after the rat plague. This is a beautiful safe room. Holy shit. Although, I don't know how many tea sets she really needs. This could be handy. Soka. Oh, it's SNJ Health Elixir. Sokolov and Joplin. Piero and Sokolov work together on it. Oh, that's nice. Alright, we'll read that book in a second. Information on bone charms. Alright, we'll read that in a minute. Empty bottles. Letter from Wyman. Emily, I didn't want to wake you this morning, but you'll have to forgive me since we must have said goodbye a hundred times yesterday night. The only chance I get to see you with your hair all whichever way it is while you're asleep. As soon as the sun rises, you'll put on your empress face. Wait, wait, okay. I need to start over. Emily, I don't want, didn't want to wake you this morning, but you'll forgive me since we must have said goodbye a hundred times yesterday night. And the only chance I get to see you with your hair all whichever way is while you're asleep. As soon as the sun rises, you'll put on your empress face. It makes me happy that I know your real face, the one that laughs at our silly rhymes. Aw, was she in, like, love with Wyman or something? Aw, that's sad. Thanks, character, that we only, you know, got to know a couple of seconds before you died. Aw. I don't know. I don't want to go back to Morley, but I'm needing... I'm needed there. It'll be months before we see each other again. I'll miss you. I'll bring you some white leaf tobacco for your hookah. Lord Kovo, if you're reading this letter as per your royal protector functions, know that I'm joking and perfectly aware that white leaf tobacco is forbidden in Crystal. <laughs> Take care, my darling Emily. Don't go falling from a rooftop. I love you, Wyman. Aww. Character backstory. Aww. Oh. Oh. That might be the uh, evil playthrough drawing of em Emily does of Corvo. Wow. Wow. Sadly, I missed that drawing when we played it. Oh, there's a picture of the golden cat. Rainbows over and a unicorn flying over a golden cat or Pegasus. Aww. Here's the map of the old game. Oh, it's so cool. Corvo Tano, the Royal Protector of In Our Times, Part 1. His parents were older at the time of his birth, and his father died in a lumber accident outside the city when Corvo was still young. Around that time, his only sibling, a firstborn sister, moved away to Morley, and the family subsequently lost all contact with her. Interesting. Only 16, Corvo dazzled the people of Karnaka when he entered and won the annual Blade Verbenda. The spectators from all over Circanos were thrilled to see someone so young and striking from a working class family advance through duel after duel, eventually taking the prize. This unexpected outcome secured Corvo a junior officer ranking in the Grand Circonon Guard. Circonon Guard. Circonon? Guard. Circonon? Yeah, whatever. As a soldier, he was involved in a number of conflicts against organized criminal groups, rogue city states within Circonos, and pirate bands along the chain of islands radiating east from Circonos. Sent from his homeland at the age of 18 by the Duke of Circonos, then Thaddeus Abel, father of Luca Abel, for was assigned to serve the Emperor in Dunwall as a diplomatic gift. The Circonoan heritage made him a bit of an outsider in Dunwall, but the capital city must have seemed exotic and full of old world mystery. A few months after he moved to Dunwall, it was recorded that Corvo received word that his mother had passed away several weeks after his departure from Karnaka. Aww. Fancy! So glow has been working on toilet technology. Riviera fig wine. Oh, quite cool stuff. Um, ba -ba -ba. Oh, here we are. Samuel Beechwood carving. Oh, it's Samuel's boat from the first game. Old Samuel made this. Aww. I'm glad he didn't live to see me driven out of Dunwall Tower. Oh, Samuel died. Poor Samuel, he was a good guy. Oh, shit, I didn't even see this up here. Emily, my daughter. I know that one day you'll be From the grown secret up, room in the tower. I wonder what you'll remember of these years. Will you recall your time as a child with fondness? Or were there too many caretakers, formal dinners and lessons about boring old history? Maybe the precious hours we spent together will shine brighter. Time captured now and then with your mother and with Corvo. Oh, she saved it all this years. Was always close to my heart. I hope the season of rats and plague will be nothing more than a passing shadow on your early memories. A crisis come and passed, weathered by your mother and her advisors. You'll sit on the throne someday, and will do well, I hope. It's a tricky life, full of responsibility. 
nobody in peril. It was not your choice to be the daughter of an empress. But I believe you'll rise to the challenge. Stay good-hearted, Emily. Keep drawing and telling stories. And only share your power with those you truly trust. If only Aww. I could talk to my mother one more time. Oh ho ho, we got a bunch of stuff in here. The evil brothers that held her captive. Oh wow, all kinds of her drawings. I love this, this is such a great throwback. The reserves won't help against Delilah. <laughs> even if I had a way to carry it all out of here. Oh, we can only take the little bar. I'd better take these. Ah. Uh. Look how much gold is in here. Come on, let me take it. So much loot. God, I can't imagine what one of these things would be worth. Holy crap. That thing is huge. She has so many of them. They're just, like, some of them are in saves and some of them are just lying around on the ground. I think, I think these are gold. Yeah, certified gold. Shit. Alright, let's see what we got up here. Anything secret and hidden? Nope, can't open the trunk. Open that bag? Damn, Emily can jump. Turbo had to upgrade himself to be able to jump that far. Nothing secret, nothing hidden. Damn. Now we got a little bit of cash. Mmm, some more food. Um. Corvo attended the Royal Protector in our times, part two. In an act of rebellion, young Jessamine Caldwin chose Corvo as her Royal Protector when Corvo was 19 and she was 12. He served her loyally as a bodyguard, courier, and some say spy, before and after she was crowned Empress. Though it was scandalous gossip at the time, it said they began a love affair around 1823 when Jessamine was 18 and Corvo 25. The next chapter of Atano's life is something out is like something out of a legend. During the Tyler Rat Plague, when the Empress fell, Corvo was accused of regicide and sentenced for execution. He was thrown in a cold prison and publicly reviled. He escaped, and as part of a small conspiracy dedicated to throwing down the tyrannical Lord Regent, Corvo struck back at the people who killed the Empress and who wronged them. As the Lord Regent fell, the Loyalist conspiracy turned on Corvo, poisoning him. Surviving through some inner resilience, he located the true assassin of the Empress and fought his way out of the flooded district. Corvo eventually cornered the last of the Loyalists on King Sparrow Island at the Burroughs Lighthouse and rescued Emily Caldwin, heir to the throne. The romantic involvement between Corvo Tano and the Empress Jessamine was a terribly kept court secret, and thus it was widely held that em Emily Caldwin is their daughter. Following the interim, Corvo watched over Emily as she began to rule the Empire of the Isles. Alarm clock. You set alarms. Gun case. All right. Crown Killer strikes again. Dunwall citizens express shock and fear as yet another outspoken critic of em Empress Emily Caldwin has met with a violent demise. The latest victim is none other than Ichabod Boyle, notable entrepreneur and supporter of the arts. Boyle recently wrote an opinion piece harshly criticizing the Empire for what he called her slipshod style of governance and her willful neglect of duties. Authorities are convinced the Crown Killer is the culprit, given the gruesome details left at the crime scene. As Her Majesty's most outspoken adversaries fall one by one to this notorious assassin, we boldly ask, is it the duty of the now the duty of the royal protector to murder all who dare to criticize the throne? The crown killer must be connected to all this, with the Duke and Delilah. Bone Charms. Excerpt from a book on sailing traditions in Scrimshaw. Bone Charms, a sailor's blessing, they say. Carving itself is a practice from long back, passed from salty dogs to young greenhorns still finding their sea legs. In old times, sailors cut into tusks of ice seals and into the arm-long fangs of the bears that roam the northern islands of Tibia. Once the whaling trade began, the practitioners began engraving the bones of these great beasts, rendering charms that sing in the night and grant some small boon, increasing a lover's vigor and providing defense against pregnancy, and allowing me to eat rats and gain mana from them. Um, a lot of clock alarms we can set, stuff like that. Gun case. I have a feeling I'll need these. Now that's a gun. Sokolov's been busy. Spyglass, nice. Ah, we probably grabbed Corvo's mask or something if it we had chosen Corvo. All right. I mean, 
kind of zooms. All right. Whispers from the void, and then that is everything in here, I think. Unless there's something up top here. Anything else that would be hidden in here? Nope. All right. Last bit of lore, and then we'll move on. It's a common story. A person has stopped breathing, pinned on... Oh, wait. Treaties on the physical existence of that foreign realm. It's a common story. A person has stopped breathing, pinned under carriage wheels or some other tragic happenstance, and is thought to be dead. But when the weight is removed, they make a quick recovery. But nonetheless, for a moment or two, this person was lost to us, lost to the world itself. And what did they experience while in this temporary death? Darkness? Nothing? No, indeed not. They tell us, as so many before have, that they were in a particular place and can describe it vividly. And who among us does not know this place? Have we not all seen it in our dreams? This place we share in the farthest reaches of our minds. The realm where nothing makes sense, where one is at both at once both lost and at home. The void. Trees on the physical existence of that foreign realm. Excerpt. Part 2. These little glimpses of the void in dreams and described by those awoken from comas are not limited to select few. In my interviews, I've gleaned that there is not a single citizen without such visions at one time or another. This, then, must be a real place, not folklore or mass delusion. Perhaps it exists bl deep below the earth or far above it. Perhaps it is right next to us, but hidden. Some trick of the light or wondrous curtain bars us from fully knowing it. And we all but wait for a natural philosopher to unlock the phenomenon to show us how to see it at will. But when so revealed, it will not be a fearsome place any longer, nor not the distance and special realms described in the myth of the outsider. It will be strange, yes, even unsettling. But nonetheless, it will draw a new realm for us to explore and eventually conquer. What new treasures await us there? Are the lakes made of liquid diamond, the crystal, or the clouds of weightless silver gas? And what things would we learn? Interesting. Also, I just had a thought, because, so when the, uh, new empress witch person, I don't remember her name, Delilah, attacked Corvo, she drew energy from his outsider mark. I'm assuming that was the, oh, it's a sequel game, you've lost all your powers, time to start again kind of thing. All right, exit door. I think we've got everything. One last look. Here we go. Um, oh, I should probably uh, equip my pistol. We'll equip this to four. Oop. All right. To the Dunwall streets. Delilah and Duke Luca Bell have taken the tower. Dunwall is no longer a safe place where you escape the city by meeting with a boat captain down at the docks. Until I understand this, I have to go into hiding. I should make my way to the docks. All right. Oh, Curtis Morgan and the postulate child. There's Lord Pendleton. Sweet. We can stake that. Oh, what else we got? Windows are all boarded up. It's like all the display cases I smashed in the first game. Tower of Dunwall, Empress Jessamine Caldwell. For over a century, Dunwall Tower has been the capital of the Isle of Gristal and the seat of power across all the Isles of the Empire. Rulers have come and gone, each adding something to the structure. Gardens, observatories, new walls, pools, and specialized interior chambers to suit their needs and whims. Dunwall Tower has withstood numerous wars, several large-scale fires, and the collapse and rebuilding of the Northern Wing. With Tivian and Serkinos joining the Empire first, it was Morlay that resisted longest. Some of the conflicts that arise also necessitate the further fortification of the Tower. Repeated assassination attempts near the end of the conflict with Morley resulted in the creation of the royal protector position, with each ruler choosing his or her own royal protector after careful consideration. And time to learn a little bit about Mom. Perhaps in retrospect, other historians will see how easy it was for us all to fall into the traps set by the schemers who managed the assassination of Empress Jessamine Caldwin. By allowing them to write history, it was for years thought that her trusted protector Corvo Atano was also her murderer. Concept we now know to be utterly false. Okay, even after the tricksters themselves were put down, banished, or imprisoned, it remained common knowledge that the royal protector was also Jessamine's murderer. How nicely they arranged history for us, and how readily we devoured their stories, hungry for each perfectly cooked morsel. But it is well past time for us to set aside this plate of lies. The schemers were not to be trusted with the Empire or with Jessamine's life. They are certainly not to be trusted with the writing down of accurate histories. Oh, 
kinds of crazy. Oh, is there something up there? Coins here. Oh, this must be like uh, Sokolov's painting room or something. Yeah, it won't let me up there. Close the toilet. Yeah, see, these are the toilets from the first game. So that flush toilet must have been one of Sokolov's new uh, fancy inventions. That's kind of cool. Is there anything up there? No. Just don't want to miss something in the first bit of the game. Keyhole peek. All right, well, I think this is out to the Dunwall. Yep. I've got to get out of Dunwall. Grand city of Dunwall. Looks like we're going to be cutting across rooftops, avoiding balconies. How far do we have to go? To the street 64 meters. Holy crap. All right, well, this is kind of an awkward place to cut it. I'd like to have actually gotten down I've to the shipyards. Away. I should talk to the captain of that ship. But uh, I think this is a good place to stop for the first episode. We'll be back with more. See if Emily uh, inherits her father's terrible assassin techniques or perfects them now that she is going full lethal and high chaos. So leave a like if you enjoyed, and stay tuned for more daily, probably around an hour-long episodes of Dishonored 2.